about uh, uh, asbestos in general. Uh, the term asbestos refers to fibrous minerals that have been commercially exploited and or that occur naturally in the environment. The U.S. Bureau of Mines, has, however, has named more than 100 minerals as asbestiform, yet only six are regulated. They're chrysotile, amosite, actinolite, tremolite, and enthophilite. It's possible to trace the use of asbestos back to the Roman Empire and beyond. Health effects were observed as early as the first century when, Rome, uh, the, when the Roman, Pliny the Elder, recommended that Roman slaves that work in the asbestos mines not be purchased because, well, they die young. In the industrial age that began in the 19th century, commercial asbestos products were first developed by H.W. Johns, who went on to found the asbestos corporate giant, uh, Johns Mansell. Mr. Johns developed asbestos products just prior to, civil, to the Civil War and went on to introduce the first major broad range of industrial use of asbestos in America. U.S. asbestos production was relatively insignificant in the first part of the 20th century, with an average production of less than 10,000 metric tons per year until 1936. Production began to increase into World War II, and by the mid-60s had reached over 100,000 tons per year. In 73, U.S. production peaked at 136,000 tons per year and began to decline rapidly after that to 5,000 tons in 2001 and down to none when the last asbestos mine closed in the U.S. in 2002. However, the U.S. has always been heavily dependent on foreign sources for its asbestos with more than 88% of its supply uh, coming from uh, imported over the last century. The majority of this asbestos was produced in Canada the world's second largest producer of asbestos, second only to the Soviet Union, or Russia. <clears throat> in its heyday, asbestos can be found in anywhere from 3,000 to 5,000 different products, uh, industrial and consumer. <coughs> it was used in millions of structures, thousands of businesses, and certainly affected tens of thousands of lives. Asbestos use was literally everywhere. Even the very first color movie uh, featured snow. Uh, Glenda used snow to wake Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz, and that, as, that was pure crystal asbestos that was rained down on the set. The strongest era for asbestos production was 1940 through 1972. The U.S. Navy had asbestos insulation in every vessel they commissioned during that period. Products included asbestos gaskets, insulation for boilers and pipe systems, and used in fire containment designs, using asbestos as fire shields in doors and walls. And if the sailors didn't get enough asbestos from the ships, they could always take a break and light up a Kent cigarette with a Micronite filter. The Micronite filter was made with crucidolite asbestos. On the industrial front, spray-on asbestos insulation was used extensively as fireproofing steel beams in construction and remains to this day in thousands of buildings throughout the U.S. and abroad. W.R. Grace Zonalite and Monaco products with 5 to 20 percent crystal asbestos content as well as Turner Newell Limpet with a whopping 70 percent amosite content were sprayed throughout the World Trade Center in New York. 400 tons of asbestos were in those buildings when they collapsed. Asbestos was also found to be a great contribution to cement. Asbestos cement bound easily, was tougher and more resilient than pure cement, and provided an element of insulation. Asbestos cement compounds were used for thousands of miles of public pipe works, for HVAC insulations, and for the foundations of uncounted structures. So let's talk about where we could potentially find asbestos. Until the 1970s, many types of building products and insulation materials used in homes used asbestos. Asbestos was banned in home construction use beginning in 1990, but beware stockpiled pre-1990 uh, products may have been used in homes built afterward. Product, uh, common products that contained asbestos, of course, were attic and wall insulation, especially in houses built between 1930 and 1970. However, insulation using vermiculite, particularly ore from Libby, Montana, may contain asbestos to this day. Vermiculite was mined in Montana between 1923 and 1990. Prior to its close, much of the world's supply of vermiculite came from Libby. Natural deposits of asbestos are commonly found in the same rocks that produce vermiculite. So steam pipes, boilers, and furnace, and furnace ducts insulated with asbestos blanket or asbestos paper could, of course, release asbestos fibers if damaged, repaired, or removed improperly. 
and we all know about floor tiles. Resilient floor tiles, vinyl asbestos, asphalt, and rubber, or the backing on vinyl floor sheeting, uh, and the adhesive used for installing such floorings often contained asbestos. Sanding them, of course, could release them, re release fibers, as could uh, scraping, um, or sanding the backing of sheet flooring during removal. Cement sheet, millboard, and paper used as insulation around furnaces and wood-burning fireplaces were often asbestos-containing materials. Inappropriate re uh, uh, removing or repair could easily remove, uh, release asbestos fibers, <coughs> as could cutting, tearing, sanding, or drilling such insulations. And actually, the gaskets around the doors of those uh, uh, wood-burning fireplaces used to be a pure uh, crystal woven into a braid. Soundproofing or decorative materials sprayed on walls and ceilings, like the popcorn in our, in our rooms upstairs, uh, often used to contain asbestos. Um, loose, crumbly, or water-damaged material may well release fibers, so of course with sanding, drilling, or scraping material, this lady in the lower right uh, was aware that there was asbestos in that material, but didn't seem to be aware that she needed to be concerned. Patching and joint compounds for walls and ceilings and texture paints often contained asbestos. Sanding, scraping, or drilling these surfaces could, of course, release asbestos. Used on walls and ceiling joints, their use was prohibited in 1977, yet our own testing through ADAO confirmed that there is asbestos present in joint compound and window spackle in significant concentrations as still sold in most hardware stores today. Asbestos cement roofing, shingles, and siding made with concrete asbestos board uh, are uh, theoretically not likely to release asbestos unless you saw a driller cut them or break them, but they will, uh, of course, weather over time. The artificial ashes in uh, fireplaces used to contain asbestos, as did the embers. Other older household products, including fireproof gloves, stovetop pads, ironing board covers, and certain hair dryers used to contain asbestos. But no list of asbestos-containing products is complete without talking about asbestos in brakes and linings, clutch facings, and gaskets. Now, the use of asbestos in brake pads was largely phased out in vehicle production in 1990. <coughs> Unfortunately, this does not mean that asbestos has stopped being a hazard to the auto mechanics, the auto industry workers, the do-it-yourselfers, and others. Late model vehicles often still harbor the brake dust and contain, that contain asbestos. Brakes on vehicles as recently as 1993 were still being manufactured in the U.S. with asbestos brakes. Additionally, some imports continue to use asbestos linings in new vehicle models. Also, many aftermarket brakes still have asbestos. Studies show that ambient asbestos levels in urban areas uh, are higher in direct proportion to the traffic, often attributed to the dust from autom automotive brakes. So let's talk about some less common potential asbestos sources. Um, potting mixes, wicks, art clays, paints, and sandblasting media have all been found to contain asbestos at one time or another and are potentially asbestos-containing material, as well as any of other, hundreds of other talc-based or talc-containing products. Like vermiculite, talc occurs in na natural rock under the same geologic conditions that form asbestos minerals, talc is often formed, actually, via hydration of serpentinite, and therefore talc is commonly contaminated. Talc can also exhibit asbestiform habit on its own, as I think Dr. Weber, Weber showed very nicely just a moment ago. But it was overlooked as a fibrous mineral of concern when we were dra dra drafting our current regulations in the 1970s. Talc's used in the manufacture of a myriad of products including animal feed, automobiles, cables, ceramic tiles, chewing gum, sweets, co cosmetics, fertilizers, foundry technology, olive oil, paint, paper, pharmaceuticals, plaster, plastics, printing inks, putties, refractories, roof, uh, roofing, tires, and of course, body powders. Sporadic discoveries of asbestos and products due to talc contamination uh, have uh, occurred in the last 30 years and made the headlines, including, of course, baby powder, asbestos and crayons, and how come we can't find anything about NITOL 100, art clay? In 2007, our own testing again through the Asbestos uh, Disease Awareness Organization found asbestos in duct tape, in DAP joint compound, and the now infamous CSI fingerprint kit. Um, supplemental testing re had revealed asbestos in hundreds of other products manufactured from contaminated Asian talc. Uh, <coughs> products found with asbestos not only in the US, but in Germany 
in Korea and China and in products that were distributed throughout the world. Without regulations mandating testing and banning of asbestos, we can all be concerned that there are still products uh, that contain asbestos heretofore left undiscovered in our stores, on our streets, and in our homes. Though we do not have a full ban on asbestos, we do have a ban on some asbestos containing products. Under the Clean Air Act, most spray applied surfacing or application of materials containing more than 1% or wet applied, preformed, or block asbestos insulation on pipes, boilers, or tanks have been banned. And under the Toxic Substance Control Act, or TASCA, corrugated roll or specialty papers or felts were uh, halted as, this is important, any new use of asbestos. However, the EPA has no existing bans on most other asbestos-containing products or uses. EPA does not track the manufacture, processing, or distribution in commerce of asbestos-containing products. So let's, uh, let's, start, let's, let's go off on the side here and talk about asbestos and water. Asbestos can be found in your water by two main pathways, either by runoff through naturally occurring asbestos or by travel through asbestos-containing aqueducts like our uh, cement asbestos pipe. There are an estimated um, 200,000 miles of asbestos cement pipe in the U.S. The extent of shedding asbestos from those pipes is dependent on the characteristics of the pipe, whether it's coated or not, and the aggressiveness of the transport of water which is calculated based on the, uh, the, product's water, the product of the water's pH, its hardness, and its total alkalinity. It was determined that at least 66.5%, or two out of three, of the U.S. water systems have properties that can erode fibers from asbestos cement pipe. Now, a report um, of water transported through asbestos cement pipe described concentrations of asbestos as high as 38 million fibers per liter of water in Florida. 47 million asbestos fibers per liter in Kentucky, and over 480 million fibers per liter in a Massachusetts town. And if you talk to Dr. Weber, he'll tell you stories reaching into the billions of asbestos structures per liter of water. Okay, well let's talk about food and beverages. Food and beverages can become contaminated with asbestos fibers from construction or processing materials. Asbestos contamination has been observed in such unexpected places as jars of pickles, bags of flour, of rice, even Twinkies brand snack cakes were found to contain asbestos at one time. Since the mid-1970s, most if not all the filters used in food and beverage production in the U.S. are non-asbestos. However, some use of asbestos fibers still continues in imported beverages, beverage production today. In an investigation of asbestos fiber contamination in various uh, uh, brands of Canadian beer, wine, sherry, and port, six brands of American beer, six brands of European wine, vermouth, and sherry, and two brands of South African sherry were all found to contain asbestos fibers. Finally, we must consider that asbestos can also come into our lives, quote, naturally. Asbestos forms along faults where the oceanic crustal material is thrust up into the continental, continental crust, usually on the ocean side of the mountain ranges. This accounts for massive asbestos uh, deposits along the eastern side of the Appalachians and along the, the west base of the Sierra Nevada and coastal ranges in California. And for, in fact, serpentine is still the California state rock. Uh, in fact, there are small occurrences of naturally occurring asbestos in most every state in the Union, uh, even in Central Park in New York. Um, so in summary, asbestos can be found in a myriad of building materials, auto brakes, as contaminate, and contamination in our consumer products, uh, our water, our air, even our food. We should also consider potential secondhand exposures in dust and air from a building abatement, renovation and demolition, as well as exposure potential from naturally occurring asbestos. But remember, no matter how diligent we are, the numbers are staggering when you consider how many fibers can come from a very small amount of asbestos, as we've seen in the penny slide example. To leave you with another example, one nine by nine school tile that contains 1% crystal asbestos of average size fibers would have over 240 trillion individual fibers. To think about how big this number is, the population of the U.S. is only 308 billion. <coughs> There are only, uh, only 100 billion stars in the Milky Way galaxy, and the national deficit is a paltry $12.6 trillion.